Hi everyone, my name is Becca Thomas. I'm the Director of Injury Prevention and Control here at the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. Thank you so much for having me to talk about spinal cord injuries in Massachusetts and the Thomas P. Kennedy Spinal Cord Injury Trust Fund. I'm really grateful to all of our partners who are out making the lives better for people who are living with spinal cord injury and for Massachusetts Box again for making sure that we stay aware of all of these great activities. So I have some data for you that I'd love to share. Uh, first, I wanted to talk a little bit about non-fatal spinal cord injuries. So these are spinal cord injuries where the individual does not die. Um, and we see many more where people do die from spinal cord injury because it is such a severe injury. So in fiscal year 2020, which ended on June 30th, 2020, that's the first year of the pandemic, we had 120 emergency department visits for spinal cord injury. We also saw 691 hospital stays. Oftentimes when we look at injury, ED visits are higher than hospitals, hospitalizations or hospital stays. But you can see with spinal cord injury, hospital stays are much higher than ED visits. And again, that's because of the severity of this kind of injury. The overall uh, count of spinal cord injuries in Massachusetts is fairly stable. We're not seeing a lot of large fluctuations. Though it will be interesting to keep on our eyes on the FY21 and FY22 data and see how the pandemic may have affected these numbers. The leading causes of non-fatal spinal cord injury include falls, motor vehicle transportation, that's MVT, and struck by and against, although you can see how, how rapidly those numbers, those counts decline with um, struck by and against being less than 11, so we're not able to share the actual count. But falls, you can see that first line in the table, that 209 in fiscal year 2020, that is the leading cause of spinal cord injuries. And as for levels of spinal cord injury, we thought you all might be a little bit curious about this. The majority of the spinal cord injuries that show up in our ED visits and our hospitalization data are at the cervical level, although we do see some at the thoracic and the lumbar level, but really that cervical level spinal cord injury is the most prevalent. We stratified the data from the ED visits and the hospitalizations uh, to learn a little bit more about who's at highest risk for sustaining a spinal cord injury. And we found that men are more prone to spinal cord injuries than women. And that's sex identified at birth. So in fiscal year 20, the rate per 100,000 um, population for women was 3.1 and seven for men. So that's more than double the rate for men. The risk of sustaining a spinal cord injury also increases with age, which makes sense. We know that falls also increase with age. The rate nearly doubles every 20 years of age. So for each 20 year age bracket, we see that rate of spinal cord injury doubling. We also saw some race and ethnicity disparities with the rate of spinal cord injury among black non-Hispanic residents and white non-Hispanic residents being higher than Asian Pacific Islander or Hispanic residents here in Massachusetts. And more concerning as well is that the rate of spinal cord injury among black non-Hispanic residents increased substantially in fiscal year 20. With fiscal year 19, there was 5.1 per 100,000 among our black non-Hispanic residents. And in fiscal year 20, it was 8.8. .8. So perhaps there was something happening during the pandemic that was leading to this larger increase in this higher risk for black non-Hispanic residents. We also spend a lot of money on spinal cord injuries because of the severity of those injuries. In fiscal year 20 of the 956 non-fatal spinal cord injuries, almost $70 million were spent in hospital charges. Luckily here in Massachusetts, we have the Thomas P. Kennedy Spinal Cord Injury Trust Fund, and the trust fund promotes treatments to overcome the effects of chronic spinal cord injury. It has re revenue obtained from a $50 surcharge to persons seeking to reinstate their driver's license after suspension for multiple moving violations. In fiscal year 23, which just ended on July 1st, 2022, the starting balance was about $1.5 million. In fiscal year 22, which ended on June 30th, 2022, uh, we had deposited $865,000 
um, due to those revenues from the surcharge. With those funds, we're able to fund a lot of really fantastic thinkers in the field of spinal cord injury care research. So we have vendors from Boston Children's Hospital, Boston University, Harvard University, Mass General Hospital, and Spalding Rehab, who are all conducting phenomenal and advanced research on curing spinal cord injuries. And I hear through the Spinal Cord Awareness Week, you'll be able to hear from several of these um, researchers about the progress that they're making. That's all I have for you today, but I'm so grateful to be able to present this information. I hope you will connect with us. We have lots of ways of connecting on Twitter and LinkedIn and on our mass.gov web pages. And feel free to reach out to me at any point. My email is rebecca.thomas at mass.gov. And I'm so grateful for all of the work that you do to support the community of people living with spinal cord injuries. Take care.